All right, so the best way to illustrate these rules is just by doing an example. So since we've been talking about carbon, let's go ahead and take a look at this example where we draw the structure for a carbon atom. So remember, carbon has six electrons, so I've drawn out one, two, three, four, five, six electrons that carbon has. Each one of these single-headed arrows counts as one electron. So what we have to do is find a home for these six electrons in our structure of an atom diagram, okay? So if you haven't already, go ahead and draw out the structure of an atom like we've done here, and we've got to fill out the electrons in these orbitals now. Okay, so let's take a look at our rules. First rule, fill out the orbitals in increasing energy. Okay, so that means we're going to start adding electrons to the orbital that's the lowest in energy and then work our way up. Okay, so remember, the closer you are to the nucleus, the lower in energy you are. So this orbital is closest to the nucleus, so he's going to be the lowest in energy. So we're going to start by filling him up with some electrons. And we're going to give out one electron at a time. Okay, so let's give this first orbital one electron, one single-headed arrow, and when we say give one electron out at a time, does that mean we're going to give one to this orbital, then one to this guy, then one to this guy, one to this guy, and then one to this guy? Well, no, because we still have to follow our first rule of filling orbitals in increasing energy. Okay, so we got to fill up our lowest energy orbital first before moving on to the next one. So we got to fill up, fill up this orbital before moving on to this one, got to fill up this one before moving on to these. Okay, so even though it says give one electron at a time, you still have to fill the orbitals in the order of increasing energy. Okay? So we've given this guy one electron. We know we can't move on to the next one until this guy's filled up. So how many electrons fit in an orbital? Two electrons per orbital with opposite spins. Okay, so this guy's got one. Let's go ahead and give him another. And we filled this guy up now. He's got two electrons in this orbital and they're in opposite spins with one another, okay? All right, so we used up two electrons to fill this orbital. So let me go ahead and put an X next to those two electrons to say that we used them. So we have four electrons left to try to fill up the rest of these orbitals. Okay, so now that we filled up this one, we can go to the next highest energy orbital, which is this one. We're gonna give him one electron at a time. So let's give him one electron. And then if you look around, is there any other orbital that you can give an electron to at this point? Can you give an electron to this guy? Well, no, because he's higher in energy than this one. You need to fill up this orbital before you move on to the next highest energy orbital. Okay, so we've given him one, but you can't give that to anybody else. So let's make sure to fill this guy up before moving on to the next one. So we know we have two electrons per orbital. So let's give this guy a second one. And they have opposite spins. So we just used up that electron and that electron. All right, so we just finished filling up this orbital with electrons. Now we can move on to the next highest energy orbitals, which are these three. But the question is, which one of these orbitals are you going to start filling with electrons first? Well, let me ask you, are any of these orbitals higher in energy than each other? Well, they're all the same distance away from the nucleus, so they're basically the same energy, right? So it doesn't matter. You can choose any of these orbitals to start giving electrons to first. Arbitrarily, I'm just going to choose this guy. Okay, so let me go ahead and give him one electron at a time. And here's the moment of truth, you guys. Are we going to fill this orbital up by giving him another electron? Or are we going to give the next electron to one of these orbitals? Well, this is the whole idea behind giving one electron at a time. You got to be fair to the other orbitals of the same energy. Okay, so arbitrarily, I just chose this guy to give him the first electron, but I'm not going to give him a second electron to fill him up before I give an electron to these other orbitals of the same energy. Okay, so hey, you can either choose this one or this one to give the next electron to. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And I gave him another electron. So we just used up one, two more electrons. And that uses up our supply of electrons for carbon, right? You guys, there's only six electrons that carbon has, and we've used two, four, five, six electrons so far. So we're done. We've drawn out the structure of carbon. We've drawn out its six electrons in the ground state configuration. These electrons are set up in their lowest energy, highest stability state, which is their ground state configuration. And I know it kind of sucks for this orbital because he didn't get any electrons, but that's just the way it goes, you guys. You only had six electrons to use here, so you filled up these orbitals the best you could. Sometimes you can't fill up the orbital at all. Sometimes you can only fill up the orbital with one electron. Point is, you got to follow these rules. Fill orbitals in increasing energy, 
you saw that we filled up this orbital before moving on to this orbital, and you fill up this orbital before moving on to these orbitals, okay? And you're gonna give one electron at a time, as you saw here, we gave this guy one electron, we didn't give him another one before giving another orbital of the same energy an electron. That's the idea of giving one electron at a time, okay? And as you saw, we have two electrons per orbital with opposite spins. Okay, so if we had had more electrons, you guys, we would have filled up this one, this one, and this one with two electrons with opposite spins. But as it was, we only had six electrons for carbon, so we did the best we could. All right, so one more thing to mention here, because whenever you're talking about electron configuration, you're also going to be talking about this stuff, this 1s2, 2s2, 2p2 stuff. And honestly, when I took general chemistry, this 1s2, 2s2, 2p2 stuff kind of freaked me out. Whenever I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, what are they talking about? Until I figured out that this is just a shortcut for drawing out this thing. Okay, so if you're ever talking about electron configuration, you're more than welcome to draw out this entire structure of the atom, draw out these orbitals, and draw out the electrons in their proper configuration, in their ground state configuration. But if you're sick of drawing out all these circles and rectangular boxes and stuff, then you can draw a shortcut for this like this. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain to you what these numbers and letters mean. Okay, so these numbers that are in front of the letters, so this one, this two, and this two, these numbers refer to energy levels, okay? So when you see this one in front of the letter, or this two in front of the letter, this stands for the first energy level. Or if you see a two in front of it, that stands for the second energy level. Or a two there stands for the second energy level, okay? So let's go and write this down real quick. That these, that these numbers in front of the letters, these are just referring to the energy levels that we know. Okay? All right, so the second part to this is these letters. Okay, so S, S, and P. When you see these, these are referring to the orbitals. Okay, whether you have an S orbital, an S orbital, or P orbitals. Okay, so when you see this S, S, and P, that's just referring to whether you have an S or a P orbital. So let's go ahead and write this down. That S, S, and P, these letters, all they stand for is the orbitals that you're talking about. All right, so the last part of this is these superscripted numbers here. Okay, so when you see two, two, and two, these are just referring to how many electrons you have in those orbitals. So let's go ahead and label this real quick. This is referring to the number of electrons in those orbitals. All right, so I know that this still might seem a little complicated, but I'm telling you that this is a shortcut that was designed to make your life easier. This is a shortcut to drawing out this entire structure of an atom. Okay, so let me break down how this works for you. Okay, so when you look at this, each one of these are a separate unit. Okay, so what I mean is 1s2, this is one unit. 2s2, this is another unit. 2p2, this is another unit. So let's look at these individually and see what they're talking about. Okay, so let's look at this first one. 1s2, what is this saying? Well, the number in front stands for the energy level. So one, this stands for number one, the first energy level. S, this stands for an orbital. This is saying that in the first energy level, it's got an S orbital. And this superscripted number, we said that this stands for the number of electrons in that orbital. So this is saying one, first energy level, s, it's got an s orbital, and two, it's got two electrons in that s orbital, okay? So hey, if you didn't catch on, let's go ahead and go to the next one because you're going to get it by the time we get to the end of this thing. Okay, so this two stands for second energy level, okay, so second energy level, s stands for the type of orbital you're talking about. So in this second energy level, it's got an s orbital here, right? And two, this stands for the number of electrons in that s orbital. So as you can see, there's two electrons in this s orbital. It makes sense, right, you guys? If not, let's go ahead and go to this last one, and hopefully this will seal the deal for you guys. Okay, so 2p2. Two, this stands for what? 
an energy level, right? Second energy level, P is talking about the types of orbitals you're dealing with. So we've got these P orbitals. And how many electrons are in these P orbitals? Two, one in this one and one in this one. Okay, so as you can see, this is just a shortcut for drawing out this entire thing. The number in front stands for the energy level that you're talking about, either first energy level or second energy level. The letter stands for the type of orbital you're talking about, whether it's an s orbital, s orbital, or p orbitals. And the superscripted number, this is just saying how many electrons are in those orbitals. Okay, so two, two electrons are in this s orbital, this first energy level, that's one is two. Same thing here, this is saying that there's two electrons in this orbital, and then two electrons in these p orbitals, okay? All right, so now would actually be a great time for you guys to take a break for a minute and practice some of these problems. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is practice drawing out the different structure of atoms. Like here we drew out carbon, so practice drawing out nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. See what the structure of those atoms looks like, and also draw out this electron configuration shortcut that we did here. Okay, so you guys don't have to do a lot because drawing out these structures of atoms is kind of a pain in the butt. But I just want you guys to do it until you realize that this is just a shortcut representation for drawing out this whole thing, okay? So just practice drawing out a couple, then we'll come back and say a couple more things about these electrons. All right, so picking up where we left off, this atom had a total of six electrons, right? Two, four, six electrons. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here because not all of these electrons are the same. Some of them have special powers and I've marked these electrons that have special powers in red here, okay? I've neglected these ones right here. Only these ones have special powers. But what is it about these electrons that makes them special? Well, these electrons are in the outermost energy level. What does that mean? Well, in this atom, we had two energy levels, right? This was the first energy level. This is the second energy level. As you can see, these electrons that I've marked in red, these fall within the second energy level. And they're in the outermost energy level. There's no more energy levels beyond the second energy level. So these are the ones in the outermost energy level, and that's what makes them special. But what's special about these ones in the outermost energy level? Well, if you guys remember, I told you that electrons are the glue that sticks atoms together, right? Electrons are the reason why reactions can happen. Stick two electrons in between two atoms to make a bond. Remove those two electrons between two atoms to break a bond. So those electrons that I'm talking about that acts as a glue to stick atoms together is these electrons in the outermost energy level. That's what makes them special. These electrons are capable of making bonds and breaking bonds. These electrons on the inner energy levels, those don't do anything, okay? It's only the electrons in the outermost energy levels that are capable of doing reactions, making bonds and breaking bonds, okay? So since these electrons have special powers, since they're special, we give them a special name. And that name is valence electrons. Whenever you see valence electrons, this is just referring to electrons that are in the outermost energy level, okay? And I've also marked this section in red because as you can see, this section corresponds to these electrons, okay? So 2s2, that refers to here, two electrons in the s orbital of energy level two, and 2p2, same thing. We've got two electrons in the p orbitals of energy level two, okay? So this is the same thing as this, and these are referred to as valence electrons, electrons that are in the outermost energy level.